Listen, you learn something. Amen. Learn something. Now, now, you won't get healed just because you heard Kathy's testimony. That's right. That's right. And I have to tell you the truth. I have to tell you the truth. Now, you can be inspired to do what she did. Amen. Now, I know what she does. Amen. But just listen to her testimony won't get you healed. That testimony is to inspire you to do what she's doing. Amen. Now, I preach, teach faith three times a week here. Amen. I teach faith three times a week here. Sunday morning, Wednesday morning, Thursday night. Faith come by hearing. Amen. The reason Kathy got healed, because she is here in faith. I don't know. I don't know if she ever, she never missed a class on Wednesday. I know she never missed a class. She never missed a Sunday, to my knowledge. You understand? What you, you get to, you get what I'm talking about. I'm trying to tell you how you. I'm trying to tell you how to get your healing. You're not going to get your healing running from meeting to meeting. People used to do, they used to do that back in the early days of the charismatic movement. They used to do that. They'd run from meeting to meeting trying to get healed. What they need to do is get in the meeting, sit down, and listen to the word of faith, and you'll get your healing running around from here to there. Amen. God's not a rabbit's foot. <laughs> he's not. I don't know, really. No, I think people think he's a rabbit's foot. God's not a rabbit's foot. You're going to get your healing when you sit down and listen to the word of faith minister to you, talk to you. Faith comes by hearing. You don't have to, you can't feel it. You, you, you think, you, well, how do I know if I'm out get it? You'll know. When the devil show up, you'll know. I didn't say if the devil show up. I said when the devil show up, you'll know. You'll know if you got faith or not. You can't feel faith. You, can't get, you don't get faith just because somebody else got faith. You get faith when you, you have faith when you hear the word of God. That's when faith, faith comes. Faith comes. Faith comes. Faith comes. Come by hearing. You hearing the word of faith. If you don't have time to come to these meetings, you are not going to get it. That's right. Praise God. I'll tell you right up front. Amen. He said, well, I don't have time. Time. The devil got time to kill you. And he will kill you. Graveyard dead. But faith will save you. Faith come by hearing. Uh, that's why I was, I, I, I shouted, I heard that tower shouting. She listens to faith. I know. I'm teaching and she's here. Amen. That's why she got her healing. Amen. You'll get yours when you get the word of faith. Faith will get you anything you want. I didn't say faith will get you anything you need. Faith will get you anything you want. God will give you the desires of your heart. Amen. He is already, in fact, the Bible says God has given us all things that pertain, to, that pertain to life and godliness, but he's given it unto us through the knowledge of him. It's through his word. Everything you get is going to come through the word. Amen. You're going to have faith for it through the, by way of the word of God. You will have faith for it. Yes. Faith come by hearing. Amen. A heart full of faith. Hallelujah. And that's right along what we're preaching on. I always preach on faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the ingredients of for life. And the two ingredients that I have outlined here in this lesson is faith and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Faith and the Holy Spirit. In the book of Ephesians, I'll read chapter 6, chapter 6, verses 11, 10 and 11. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord <clears throat> and in the power of his might. How do I be strong? Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the schemings of the devil. Amen. The devil don't like you, I'll tell you right up front. The devil hates you. He wants to kill you. And he will kill you if you don't know how to keep him from killing you. 
Jesus forewarned us and said, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He don't know how to spell mercy. He comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. John's Gospel, chapter number 10 and verse number 10. I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. And so we want to look at these two ingredients because those are the ingredients for life. When you learn, and more than that, but when you learn how to operate in faith, when you understand faith, one of the things that I know for me, understanding faith, is that I was now early, early days of my instruction and being taught on the word of faith. I thought I was trying to feel faith. And then I thought, you know what I mean, well, if I get real spiritual, I'll have faith. No, 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 but I found out none of that works. I know I learned these things, so you don't have to go through that. You, you, and and, and I, think, I think the worst struggles I had was trying to feel it. And if I could feel like I had faith, I'd have it. And that didn't work. And so, you know, I just, so, I just, so I knew it was right. So, you know, I just stayed with it. I knew God wasn't telling a lie. I know he said it was impossible to preach him without faith. And I, and I knew that I could, have, I, I could have anything with my faith. But uh, if, I, if I tell you, let me tell you how I, identify, how I found out about faith, how I really learned. I learned about faith by staying with God to begin with. And here's how I found out how, how, here's how I found out about faith. I was doing what you're supposed to do to get faith. I found that out. I thought, well, well, well I know God's telling the truth. I know faith comes by hearing. So I just locked in on hearing. I wouldn't quit. I just locked in on hearing. I used to travel. We used to travel a lot early, early my wife and I, early, early days, early, back in the early, my early days, we used to travel a lot by automobile. And uh, I, I, we'd, we'd go out to Tulsa, Oklahoma. I'd go out to the meetings out there. I'm, I'm, I'm growing, trying to learn how to serve God, trying to learn. And I'd buy these tapes back in the CD days. Amen. I'd get a bunch of CDs. And it was my pleasure. I remember it would be my pleasure to, be, to go on a long trip with a whole bunch of CDs. Amen. <laughs> it was my pleasure. Yeah. Man, I just, I remember once I, we, we, we drove out to Oklahoma, from Oklahoma, drove down to Texas. And, uh, and uh, so we lived in t I said, and I had a whole stack of them. I had a bunch of them. Praise yeah. God. That's oh, God. man, I just, I just, I just listening. I'm just, and I'm, dear God, I'm just soaking. I'm, and I felt so good. I got all this highway between New Texas, long way from here to Texas, you know. Yeah. I got a lot, two days of it. You know, but I got all this time, but I got all these CDs, and I'm just listening, CD after CD. Yeah. CD. I'm just feeding, boy. I'm just feeding, yeah. Yeah. feeding, yeah. feeding, feeding. And just every dear God, I, I thought everybody in the world wanted to hear what I was hearing. Yeah. <laughs> but I found out they weren't. <laughs> People weren't interested in, that, interested in that. I found out when I come and got this ministry started. Yeah, I found out that they don't care. They ain't interested in no faith. Yeah. People, yeah. you think they are. They want to get healed, all right, but they ain't interested in listening. But I'm trying to, I'm trying to, you know, I'm hearing about all these wonderful mentors that God has put me around, and I'm listening and listening and listening, and everybody talking faith, and I, I got it, but I, how I know, how am I going to know about when I got this faith? Let me tell you how I found out about faith. Let me tell you how I, let me tell you how I got, saw it begin to see the results of faith. Now, faith was coming all right. I'm listening. I'm, I mean, I'm listening. I'm, I mean, dear God, faith, I'm hearing, I'm hearing, I'm hearing. And I just for years, I, I'm just hearing. Let me tell you when it really dawned on me what, real, the real, what faith really, how it really was. When my life, when I began to see the results and the change in my life, Amen. I said, that's the way you work. Because I'm all this time, I'm trying to feel it, you know. Yes, yes. Never did feel anything. You know, and I found out about faith when my life started to conform to what I'm hearing. I said, oh, that's it. I'm trying to feel it, Brother Harold. Never did feel anything. I mean, I'm listening to faith and reading the Bible, just listening and reading and listening and reading and, reading and couldn't feel nothing. 
I mean, oh, oh, Sunday morning dance and skip. You know, you go through that. You know, yeah. you go through that. You know, but when I finished jerking and spitting on Sunday morning, it was over. You know. <laughs> and uh, you know, but I didn't know. But you know, you're feeling good in here on Sunday morning. You need ha, faith out there when you're out there with other people. Right. Yeah. Amen. But I, but I began to uh, 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 pick up on that yeah. when I when my life. Started when I grew enough when my life started to conform, yeah. and I could see it. I said, Oh boy, that's the way it works. This is not something for you to feel, but it's something for you to live. And then, of course, the devil he's always running around like he don't have good sense, but then he, could, he didn't bother me no more. When I say he didn't bother me, what he was doing didn't bother me. That's what I mean when I say that. What he would, when he'd show up, dear God, he'd know that, there's no fear at all whatsoever. I'd just speak the word of God and he'd go. Yeah, yeah. I said, oh boy, this is good. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, you know, then, but, but you, now, now here again, the devil don't have good sense. He'll still come and treat you just like you don't have faith. Because right. yeah. he know you don't feel it either. He know you don't feel yeah. it. Yeah. And, and you know, if you think, you know, you think, you don't feel nothing, you think, dear God, you got to go with the circumstances. <laughs> But I learned how to apply the word of God without have that feeling right, anything. Right. Amen. 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 The devil come and attack me in the middle of the night. I said, no, you don't. In the name of Jesus, Amen. by his stripes, I'm healed. Amen. Didn't feel a thing. Amen. Didn't feel a thing. Right. I just holler out, by his stripes, I'm healed. By, I've, I've, been, I've been hit by so hard by the devil in the middle of the night. I sing us. I miller, I make a sing song. By his stripes, I'm here. And go on to sleep. Yes, sir. Wake up the next morning fresh as a daisy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Faith is working. Faith. Yes. Faith is working. Yes, sir. Still ain't feeling nothing. Come on now. Still. Faith is not about feeling. Yes. Oh, I had to learn that. Faith is not about feeling. Faith is about attending to the word of God, yes. doing what the word says, Amen. doing what God says. What God said, do it. What God say, do it. What God say, do it. What God say, do it. I remember back in the early days, I, was up, I found out about tithing. Way back, I remember way back in the day, I learned about tithing. And I, didn't, I never, never heard, we, I'm Baptist, you know. We didn't teach tithing. Or they didn't teach it. No, I didn't, at least I didn't hear them. And I found out, I come over, I got hanging around with the Pentecostals and the charismatic, I found out about tithing. And then I started, I started tithing. I thought I was going broke for sure. <laughs> that devil said, you, you go tithe, huh? <laughs> I've told this story before. I'll tell it again because it's worth telling because it may be inspire you. But, but I, would, I, would, I, would, I didn't know how to do it. I, you know, because they didn't teach me where I was at. Right, right. I didn't know how to do it. I just know to just give it to God. Amen. So yeah. when I'd get paid, this back in the days, they'd pay you on Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> cash. Well, you can't well, go cash a check. And uh, so, uh, so I take God's money out. I take God's money out and put it in the drawer. Amen. You know, when I, I said, no, I'm going to take care of God's money. I take it. So when I get my cash, cash my check. Jesse, you know how you cash a check. Cash the check, <laughs> you know what I mean, on Fridays. You know what I mean? And uh, yeah. I take God's money out uh -huh. and put it in the drawer till yeah. Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how I learned how to do it. And I started tithing. And then one time I got so, uh, uh, I got this, my money got funny. <laughs> <laughs> And it, it, uh, I was living, it was way back in there, I was living back before I got married, I wasn't living by myself, I was living by myself, I was living by myself, and uh, I remember, uh, yeah. I got so, my money got so funny, yeah. I had to go to the shopping store to go get some food, <laughs> and I had to put some gas in my car, right. okay. and I had one of my big old Buicks that I think he drank a lot of gas, yeah. you know. <laughs> Here's, here's what it came to. I never forget that. I could either buy gas to put in that car Amen. or walk down to the store to get some food. Amen. I walked. <laughs> I remember I walked, I walked, I walked. I walked to the store. Amen. And then God flipped that thing. Wow. That was the lowest point I ever hit, and God flipped it. Wow. And the result of my giving Praise began to Praise manifest. Amen. Yes. Been going up ever yes. since. Praise God. 
been going up ever since. All my finances has done over the years is grown. All uh, is just grown, grown, grown. I remember back. I remember early back, way, way back. I had this uh, young uh, CPA that would do taking care of my my, my 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 taxes. He said, "You don't give that much money." I said, "What are you talking about, man? I do." He didn't believe it. He's doing my taxes. I'm paying him to I'm paying you to do my taxes. You can take these papers and give them to me. I can't believe you give that much to the church. I said, yeah, I do. And I really did. But he, he didn't know nothing. He don't know nothing about time. He was a young, young fella, you know what I mean? But he didn't, he didn't know. But my point in that faith is what you, when you do what God says do, and then your life began to conform to the word of God. You ain't faith is not something you can feel. It's something for you to do. You do what be the God said be doers of the word. Not hearers only. You got to do what the Bible said. When God said be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, do it. He didn't say so if you feel like it, Jesse. He didn't say about whether you feel it or not. Do it. That's right. Amen. Do it. He said you love one another. Got nothing to do with how you feel. People are hating one another because they feel like they don't like them. I don't like you. How you know I don't feel like I like you? <laughs> well, I just feel. Who cares how you feel? Amen. Right, right, right. Faith has nothing to do with how you feel. That's right. Faith is doing what God say do. Amen. Believing what God say believe. Amen. That's what faith Amen. is. And when you start doing that, then your life will get in line with what the Bible is saying, Brother Gamble. Amen. That's the way faith works. It has nothing to do with how you feel. Amen. If God said you were healed, then you don't say anything otherwise. Amen. Because if Amen. God is saying one thing and you saying another, now you got a clash. That's right. God said you were healed, you said you're sick. God said, well, you're healed. You said, I'm sick. <laughs> what do you think you end up being? God's not going to say that debate with you. He already said what you were. You, you understand how faith works? Faith, when you align your mouth with what God is saying in this book. Right, right, right. You get your mouth in line with what God, I don't care whether it looks like it, I don't care whether it makes sense, I don't care, it doesn't matter. We want to be reasonable, Jackie. We want to be reasonable, but be reasonable. Being reasonable will put you in a poorhouse. I don't want to be reasonable, I want to be faithful. I want, to be, I want to be full of faith. Amen. Full of faith. Yeah. Faith, when you get over in the arena of faith, faith will navigate you through this whole system. Amen. Faith will keep you on top and not underneath. Amen. Faith will make you the head and not the tail. Amen. But it is, not, it, is not, it is not something instant. It is not something that's going to be right away. It's something, it's something that you're going to develop and grow in. You develop and you grow in faith. Faith will come to you when you come to the Word. You have to stay connected with the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the Word of God. Romans chapter 10, 17. I need, you need to look at that. You need to look at that. Look at it. Because see, this, this, is, this is, you listen to me, and you need to look at this. Romans. Do you see that? 10, 17. So then faith does what? Comes. Notice now, notice, no, no, no. You don't go find it. Faith comes Amen. to you. Amen. Faith, look at that. Faith does what? Come. Now, now, now. Just look at it. See, because see, let me see. 
Now, God said over in Hebrews, with that Hebrews 11, 6, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Now, 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 let's, without faith, you're not going to please God. Now, everybody wants to please God, right? Amen. You're not going to please him without faith. Because he that comes to God, the scripture goes on to say, must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those that do what? Diligence. Not just seek him, diligence. but those that, yes. so now some diligence will have to be about Amen. you. Yes, You're going to have to be diligent. Now, now there's, there's, there's some people that knows nothing about, nothing about diligence. How diligent are you? How diligent are you? Now, that's not that's a question for you to ponder. It's not, not, I, don't want no, I don't want no answer. It's, it's for you. Every, that question for every person. How diligent are you about the things of God? Does other things take precedent over the things of God? Are you really interested in the word of God? Are you really interested in God? Now, that's a question for you to ask. How diligent are you? Is God really first in your life? Are you more interested in the thing that you going to have for lunch than you are for, 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 for what God wants you to do? Are you more interested in how people feel about you than you are what God wants for you to do? How diligent are you? How, every one of us <coughs> need to ask that question to us. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward of those that do what? Diligently. How diligent are you? How diligent are you? Because I'm going to tell you something. The answer to these questions is going to fix most of your problems. It will fix your problems. See, the problem with many of us is that we're expecting the results of diligence, but we're not diligent. But we want the benefit of diligence. Heal me, Jesus, heal me. I ain't been to church in two days. Don't know where your Bible is. Heal me, though. Heal me. Can y'all come on and pray? <laughs> you, you understand? We want the benefit of diligence. But we're not diligent. You're going you, you to have to line with the word of God. Those that do what? Diligently seek him. Diligently. Those that do what? Diligently. He is a rewarder. The, the condition for your being rewarded is diligence. That's right. Amen. There's a condition for that. Yo, right. well, God's gonna just reward me. Uh huh. Is really? Because now, if He reward you for being lazy, now you got to reward everybody for being lazy and slothful. Wow. Wow. You're not gonna get anything. You let that die. It'll happen. God, he can, you say, well, why didn't God heal him? He couldn't. He couldn't. In order for God had to heal him, he didn't want to get his word. You understand that? See, that asks all of your whys. Well, I don't know why Grandma died. We prayed. I don't know why. Well, God healed some. Then he's going to tell the lies on God. He don't heal everybody. I didn't heard that one. Dear God, I didn't heard that one. Boy, you used to hear some stuff. And it ain't from all people out in the street either. No, God is a rewarder of those who diligently. Those who make the things of God special. How special is God to you? These are good questions for you because everybody's hustling. I mean, everybody wants to, everybody, everybody hustling, everybody's hustling. They, but, 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 but the problem is probably with you. God rewards us, but he rewards diligence. Amen. And so if he set a standard of rewarding diligence and you come up as always slothful, then how can he reward you? Because now if he rewards you, he does no need to set If you don't maintain a standard, then why set a standard? If everybody's going to run the red light, then why take, might we take the light down? You follow me? Yes, yes. Well, if God is a rewarder of diligence, then, and then everybody is slothful and lazy and getting rewarded, then he might want to change the standard. 
No, 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 no. I can tell you why you're not getting healed. Read the Bible and you'll know why. I can tell you why you're still broke. Read the Bible you'll know why. I can, I can tell you why you're still mad and frustrated. Read the, read the Bible and I'll tell you you'll see why. The Word of God is going to work when you're diligent. Diligent, when you're diligent there. Yes, Lord. How diligent are you? Yes, Lord. How diligent? How deliberate are you? Do you deliberately commit yourself to the things of God? Do you deliberately make God first in your life? Do you deliberately get on your knees before him? Do you deliberately read his word? Do you deliberately come together and do what you're supposed to do? Do you deliberately do that? Do you consistently do that? No, no, that's what he said. Well, when you do, see, that's, how, that's what I found out about this faith thing. Because I couldn't, I'm trying to feel faith. Never did feel it. No. It's amazing. You know, if I, I dear, ha, boy, this is good. You know, I got to work, I got my faith working and found out about my faith. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's amazing. I used to laugh at me and God, I'd be laughing. When faith was working, I couldn't feel, I didn't feel a thing. It didn't even make sense. I mean, one day I was out there playing golf. I lost my ball. I hit the ball, I don't know how the ball went. So I'm, I'm looking for the ball. I said, now I looked, I looked all over. And I said, God, where's that ball? And I looked at it. He said, right there. <laughs> I didn't feel a thing. I thought, dear God, I didn't feel nothing. I didn't feel goosey or nothing. All I looked at saw the ball. Yeah. <laughs> it was right there. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't feel nothing. Yeah. I thought, dear God, it's like, like he didn't do it. Just like he didn't show it to me. And I knew he showed me that ball. Because I had looked for that ball and I didn't see it. Yes. And I looked and he showed his head right there. But I didn't feel nothing. Yeah, yeah. So I said, oh, that's the way faith works. Yeah. It's just that there's many, many times I've, 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 I've commanded healing in my body and, and healing showed up. And I don't remember when it showed up. That's right. That's right. It, works every, it works every time. Faith works every time. Yeah. God, it, it works every time. I've, I'm, I used to do, and I used to do, I share these things with you because you can do them, try them yourself, they work good. I would, I would, because it keeps the devil out of your business. I would, because uh, the devil said, you don't believe that, so you didn't even confess it. See, he tell all lies, you know what I mean? But see, what I would do, I would, when I would make a, make a faith confession, then sometimes I would write it down in a date and a time. Mm -hmm. So I know the devil can't lie to me, because the devil tell you you didn't do it. Right, right. And you think, did I? <laughs> now, 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 now you're messing with your faith. So if I, if, I make a, if I make a confession for something, particular healing, I would, I would write it down date and time. And then all of a sudden, then I'd be sometime, and, I, and, I, and it would always show up. I, it all, I, never, I never miss. It always show up. And then and I'd, be, I'd be looking, I'd be looking, at, looking at them sometimes, and, and I'd be trying to think, when did that show up? I don't even remember. Right, right. Wow. But it showed up. Because yeah. I, I, I know I had it when I wrote it down. Amen. And now I'm reading, I'm rereading what I read, and I don't have it no more. Yeah. So it's gone. Wow. Amen. You see? Wow. Because I say this to tell on the devil. He, you'll make confession, and he'll say, you didn't even confess it. Yeah. Right. He'll tell you that. I know, I know he yeah. done told yeah. me that. Yeah. And he said, well, you didn't confess it right. <laughs> I'm telling you, that skunk don't miss a trick. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you. I'm tell but you got to get, the way I would get rid of him, I would write it down word for word. Yeah. I receive healing for my finger X amount of time, six o'clock in the morning to such and such a date, and write it down, and that's Amen. it. Yeah. Now, Mr. Devil, yeah. what you gonna do now? Yeah. 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 There it is, right there. I know I said it right, because right. I wrote yeah. down what I said, mm -hmm. right. and put a date and a time. Yeah. So you got to, whatever you need to do, now maybe you may not need to do that to put get him out of your business, but I do anything I need to do to get him out of my business. I don't, need, I don't have time to fool with him. Praise my point is that faith works all the time, and you don't have to wonder about faith. Faith works all the time. It's impossible for faith not to work when it is applied according to the scriptures. Praise God. It's impossible. God said, my word that goes out of my mouth will not return to me void. It will accomplish that which I please, and it will prosper in the very thing whereto I send it. God said that. It's impossible to say impossible. It is impossible for God's word not to work. Amen. Amen. That's right. 
The only thing, what you and I have to do, you and I are responsible for working the word. And when we hear the word of God, faith comes into our heart. Faith is the most powerful thing in the universe. It is dynamo. It's dynamic. It is dynamite. Faith will do it. By faith, you read, if you don't think so, you read the 11th chapter of Hebrews. Look at all the stuff that happened by faith. By faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. By faith right now, I'm living, moving, and having my being by faith right now. I am who I am by faith, by the faith. I stand where I stand, do what I do by the faith of God. There's it working in me, and don't feel, uh, don't feel nothing. Here's why you, don't, here's why you can't feel faith. The reason that you cannot feel faith, because faith is spirit by nature. Faith is spirit. It's not physical. It's not natural. Faith is by nature spirit. It's spirit. And, you, and the human can't feel spirit. You think you can. You want to. You know, did you feel God today? <laughs> now, of course, there can be... Uh, emotional releases as a result of the joy of the Lord. There's no question about that. But you can't feel. You feel him. They don't, they're not the same. Spirit and flesh is not the same. Flesh, <laughs> they're not the same. They're not the same. I'm, in fact, the old me is dead. What you, who you're listening to is the new me. This is the guy on the inside, that one, the new Owen that's born again. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. Now all things are of God. This is the new God that's speaking. I'm the one that's going to live forever. Amen. The shell that you see here, that's not me. Hallelujah. That's not me. This is only the, 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 the house that I'm living in. It's just like the car that I drove is parked in the parking lot. That car, that's not me. All that car did was, was, was transported me from my house to this facility here. All this thing here is doing is transporting me, taking me wherever I go at my command. It's the only reason that it is alive is because I am inside of it. If I stepped out of it, that thing would fall dead in the floor. The body without the spirit is, the Bible said, dead. So you have to understand that now I'm a new creature in Christ. Now I live by faith. The Bible says, uh, Habakkuk chapter number 2, verse 4 says, The just shall live by his faith. I am justified. I'm the son of God. I don't live by working. I don't live by hustling. I live by faith. In the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. You need to understand that. You need to know that. And you need to say that. And you need to act like it. Anytime you are talking any kind of defeat, you are not in faith. If you're talking any kind of defeat, you are not in faith. And you are not going to live any higher than your mouth. Listen to me carefully. Your life is not going to rise any higher than your confession. Please understand that. Now, this is the, this is, this is the ingredients that we're talking about. We're talking, these are the ingredients of life, and if you don't get them, I'm telling you, you're going to miss it. The reason that people are having problems with life is because they don't understand. They don't understand the ingredients of faith. And we didn't get to the Holy Spirit yet. The ingredient of faith, you need to understand faith. Amen. Faith is your victory. This is your victory, our faith. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Mm -hmm. And this is my victory. You know what victory is? That's always winning. Yeah. Winning. Winning. Right. winning. winning. Victory. Right. This is my victory. Yeah. Victory is always winning. I don't ever lose. Amen. Praise Praise God. God. Amen. Listen to me. Your mouth sets the standard for your life. The quality of your life that you're living now is determined by the words of your mouth. You're not going to talk sickness and walk in health. You're not going to talk poverty and lack and walk in wealth. Right. Amen. 
You're not going to talk hate and, and get in a, getting back at people and walk in love. Amen. No, no, Amen. no, no, no. Your mouth is going to set the standard for the life that you live. Yes, and what you and I have to do is go to the word of God. And that's why God said, my son, attend to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Don't let my words depart from your eyes. Keep my words in the midst of your heart. For my words are life unto those that find them. And my words are health to all their flesh. Listen to me. The word of God must be first in your life. Praise God. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 20, 21, 20, 20, 21, 22. Yes. Read them. Mm -hmm. There's a principle there. Get that principle. That's why there's two things that should be a part of your life every day. Two things. Two things. Listen to me very carefully. There's two things that should be a part of your daily diet. The Word of God and prayer. Yes. If you get too busy for the Word of God, if you get too busy for prayer, you're not too busy for the devil to kill you. That's right. That's right. Because that's exactly what he'll do. That is your shield and your buckler. Mm. Your pr prayer and the word of God is your shield and your buckler. Yes. Amen. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Prayer and the word of God is your shield and your buckler. Praise God. It will keep put you over every time. See, I'm telling you, see, see, the reason that people have a problem with love, loving people, is because there's no word. Because the word of God, well, God is love. Amen. And if you're reading the word, that's the, the word, that's God. That's right. that's right. Well, if you keep rubbing up against something, what's going to happen? You're going to get just like it. Just like it. That's right. You keep rubbing up against it. So I'm, no, no, you don't have to tell me how much you're reading, how much word you got. I know how, how you life. I see how you life. I see how you talk. Amen. You're just as mean and crabbish. You know you're not really a word in you. You know, just selfish you can be. You know, if you follow what I'm saying. No, no, no. The word of God and prayer. The word of God and prayer is your shield and your buckler. We live in a sin environment. You need protection from this environment. The word of God is your shield. The word of God is your buckler. The word of God is your protector. And what you have to do is the hearing of the word, the reading of the word, and then the word becomes a way of life for you. The word of God, you become like the word. And then when you hear the word, because remember now, remember where faith comes from. Faith come by. So what's going to happen when you keep hearing the word? Faith is coming. Listen. Don't try to figure out when it's coming or if it did come. That's not your department. Your car does not require you to trace the gas from the tank to the engine. The, your car doesn't require you to do that. The only thing the car requires you to do is when that hand go down to E, then it's your job. And, and you don't have to do it now. You don't have to. It will leave you stranded. <laughs> but once you have gotten that kneel over to full, yes, the car does not require your understanding to take the fuel from the tank to the engine, ignite it. it da, 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 I'll take care of that myself. <laughs> listen, listen. Faith in God's word is the same principle. The thing that God, the, your part in this faith journey is for you to position yourself to hear the word of God. Listen to me real carefully. Once you are hearing the word of God, and, then say, and, and he just said faith come I haven't heard. So don't say, well, I, I heard that. I've heard people tell me stuff like that, and I, I just, poor thing. No, faith don't come by having heard. Faith come by hearing hearing. It should be an ongoing diet. You heard Kathy's testimony here this morning. She's healed because she's here all the time. Amen. You know, I, I mean, I, I'm going to do my job because I'm going to, God told me, he said, you go tell them. He said, whether they show up or not, you just tell them. Amen. Now, I'll, 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 I'll be in here at, at the service time. I'll tell as long as there's one somebody here. Now, when I, when the day I come in here and ain't nobody here, 
I'm done. I said, Jesus, they left. <laughs> I'll tell him. That's exactly what I tell him. And you know what he'll say to me? Don't worry about it. They left yes. me too. That's right. They did. No, no, my job is, my job, he is, Jesus called me, he said, you, you go there and you teach them people faith, you know, and that's what I'm going to do. And so, Kathy got healed is because she made it a priority, she was diligent, she is diligent about being here, here in the Word of God. She is diligent about being, she is diligent about being, and, see, and that's the way faith works. Your job is to hear. Yeah, yeah. amen. After, when you, after you have heard, then faith takes over. You don't have to feel anything. When the devil shows up, faith will rise up and defeat him every time. Every time. Turn to Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. I'm going to read verse number one. Now therefore, thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel. Watch this. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. You are mine. Now, now watch this. Watch this. When you pass through the waters, you see that? Not if. So don't be somebody. I don't know why me. If you're talking like that, stop. It's not about you. And, and people, I, I've heard this so much. I don't know why I'm going through. You know, you don't know what I'm going through. No. And, and the truth of the matter. <laughs> No, you don't want the truth of the matter. Here's the reason. Here's, here's my point. It's not, it's not you, everybody. But you think it's just you. See, the scriptures here say, when you pass through the waters, God said, I will be with you. You see that? That's my point. See, I'm, I'm sure we're talking about faith here. Your responsibility is to and put yourself in a faith environment where you can be hearing the word of faith. Amen. That's your job. If you are not diligent about that, and when you pass through the waters, they will overflow you because faith can't work for you because it's not there. You understand this? And you'll go under. See, everybody don't, do, everybody don't get delivered. Uh, everybody don't testify like Judge was testifying this morning. Everybody don't testify like that. There's a family gathering on a lot of houses. <coughs> because not, they, 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 didn't, they didn't, the water overflowed them. Yes. And they, they bought it land at the, at the, at the morgue. Uh -huh. No, this is the truth. Uh -huh. No, you say, well, you shouldn't talk like that. Why? You scared? <laughs> no, come on. No, 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 you got to get this. You got to get this. When you pass through the waters, God said, I will be with you. But if there's no faith on the scene, you won't know that. Mm. And you're going to panic, and you will go under. Yes. Look at that. When you walk through the fire, notice he keeps saying when. When, when. <laughs> when you walk through the fire, Amen. you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. I, I wanted to show you that, and you can mark that and read it and make one of your scriptures or not. But, it, but, but this question about, you know, just by chance, ain't no just by chance, is when. 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 When your ship, your ship is coming in, dude. You better have a bulk head there for the dock. Because it's coming. Your ship's coming. There's no question about it. It's not a question of, of if it's coming. It's when it's coming. And, and Christians need to understand this because, now, now listen. When you are walking in faith, you don't care. I don't get up every day wondering when a ship's coming in or when a fire going to get started. I don't have time for that. I do not have time to be worried about, I wonder when the water's going to flow. 
I don't think about that. I don't have cross. One thing I do know, when it comes, it will not overflow me. I know when the fire comes, it will not burn me. So I don't waste my time wondering, wonder, you think it's going to come today? I don't waste time doing that. No, no, I could care less. I don't care. I don't waste my time wondering if I'm going to be tried by the devil. I don't waste my time wondering if tribulations are coming because I read the book. The book says, yea, and all that will live godly shall suffer. You <coughs> will suffer persecution. Ain't no if. Ain't no if. Ain't no if. Ain't no if. Timothy. We're talking faith here today, folks. Yeah. That's the main ingredient. Thank you, Father. Talking faith. Second Timothy 3. Verse 12. First Timothy 3, 12. Mm -hmm. Yes. And what? All who desire to live God. Hold it. You guys desire to live godly? Yeah. All who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecutions. <laughs> Still want to be a Christian? <laughs> now watch this. What do you what do you live, what do you desire to live Christ living Christ or not? The opposition is coming. The yeah. problem is you won't have nothing to deal with them with if you're not in Christ. Right. Amen. That's it. But they're coming anyway. That's it. If you're not in Christ, you will have absolutely nothing to deal with them with, and they'll take you out. Right. It'll be some slow singing and deep digging. Wow. 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 No, no. Oh, see, and I, you need to under, you people need to understand this because these these why me people, these why me why me why me why me why not you? Why me? What? I never did nothing to hurt anybody. Why me? <laughs> Poor thing. Poor thing. Yes, and all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Ain't no escape. So listen, look at it like this. It's going to rain. <laughs> so why don't you put a top on that house? That's right. Because it's going to rain. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's right. Why don't you put a roof on it? Amen. Don't do like the buzzard. Right. <laughs> the buzzard, he, he, when the sun is shining, he don't have a home yet. The buzzard have no house. At least that's what they tell me. <laughs> but he, did you ever see him soaring? Because yeah. when the sun is shining, he said, who needs a house with the sun shine like this? And then when it started raining, he drawed up somewhere on the bush. <laughs> drawed up. As soon as the rain starts, I'm going to build me a house. As soon as the rain starts. And then as soon as the rain opens, the sun comes out, he's cruising. No, don't, don't be like that. So don't, don't, don't be like that. No, 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 no. No. The problem is, the opposition is coming. But when you have developed in faith, faith will block every opposition. It will quench every fiery dot of the wicked one. God. So developing in your faith is not optional. If you're going to live victorious, if you're going to hustle and complain the rest of your life, then don't matter. Because that's, that's exactly where you're going to live. And, and you, you, you probably know people, you might have been one of them yourself, just always complaining and fussing about this and this ain't right and that ain't fair and I don't know why they treat me like this and then now the yak, 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 yak. <laughs> Never ending. Because you don't have any faith. Mm. Develop your faith by making a decision to hear and attend to the word of God on a daily basis. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, that's what, that's what this is about. That's what this is about. It's about the word. The thing that you need that's going to salvage you is between the binders of this book. 
And you need to know what it is. You need to hear it. You need to hear it. Turn to 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter 5. Faith is a way of life. God spoke to the prophets in ages ago. He said, the just shall live by his faith. Yeah. Then over in the 11th chapter of Hebrews, God lays it out, a entourage of faith people. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, right on down through the ages. All these people walking by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. Rahab, by faith. Rahab, harlot, doing good, by faith. Man, it shows that faith will fix anything. Well, it fixed you, didn't it? Amen. Fixed me. Amen. Faith. Amen. Faith did it. Amen. What am I doing? See, we, we, all, we all stood up about every Rahab. I don't know how Rahab got up there and be all there with them big folk like that. <laughs> it's not you. It's not, it's, just, it's, it's, not, it's not who you are. There are people complaining about that. I don't know how she got up there in the Hall of Fame. A yeah. <laughs> harlot. See how you think it? See how people think it is? No. No. If there's one thing for you need that you really need to know, your background, what you did or did not do, has nothing to do with how your level of walking in faith. Has Amen. nothing to do with it. Because just for your information, it didn't make it a difference if you lived uptown, downtown, cross town, no town. Everybody was in sin. And it didn't matter. It really didn't matter whether you was a harlot or a, a, a king. That's right. It made no difference right. whether you were a harlot or whether you was a deacon at the church. That's right. Right. If you're not born again, you're hell bound. Right. That's right. You understand? Yeah. But I was thinking this. See, I was thinking there are certain professions. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we frown on. Yeah. Yeah. What did you have that God didn't give you? That's right. You see what I mean? Yes. I tell you, see, we're so far behind, think we out front. Yes. But faith will straighten you out Amen. when you listen to God. The Bible, you can only get straight by listening to the Bible. That's right. Now look here, look at 1 Peter chapter number 5. Verse number 6 says, Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you when? <laughs> and that's when you're going to get exalted, when God exalts you? That's right. That he may exalt you in due time. Humble yourselves, humility, submit, lower yourself, bow yourself down. You must go down before you go up. Ah, that's right. Amen. One of the problems with the world, the world, everybody wants to go up, but nobody wants to go down. No, you're going down before you go up. You're going to be humble before you exalt it. Amen. And then we come over here in the church and we want to just come in. I had a preacher one time, he come to me and he wanted to, he just wanted to just come in and take over. I said, You must be sit down, man. <laughs> He did. This is years ago. I said, sit down. He know, I'm just, I said, sit down. Amen. Tell me who he was and who he represented. I don't care who you are. Sit down and listen. You don't know, you don't know what we're doing here. <laughs> but, but people have the idea because they are this, that, and the other. You're nothing. Yeah, that's right. God will make you something if you're going to be anything. Amen. And when Amen. God exalt you, you don't, you're not running off at the mouth acting crazy. Amen. That's right. God will do it. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you Amen. in due time. Amen. Don't ever try to promote yourself. Amen. God will exalt you. Praise God. You humble yourself. God knows exactly when to elevate you. And he will like, do, he'll do that. And, and I got news for you. I don't want nobody to elevate me but God. Because see, men, men say they'll elevate you and they'll use it as leverage. I'm the one that got you that job. They do it all the time. Politics, that's politics. Right? That, that's, that's, that we do that. That's the way we do politics. You know, my boy, I did some favor for you. You do me some favor. Right. And I got you. I made you governor. That's right. uh -huh. Now you owe me. You owe me. Yes. Yes. Amen. But that's the system that we live in. Right. But when God exalts you, you don't have to bow to no man. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. 
Humble yourselves therefore in the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon him for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, he tells you exactly who he is, your adversary, the devil, verse 8, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. The devil is walking around looking for somebody that will listen to him and that he can take over. Now listen to me real carefully. The devil is not interested in somebody that's walking in strong faith. Now notice what the Bible says. He walks around like a who? You ever watch those shows, those animal shows? You ever watch how the lions hunt? Now he'll be out there hunting, right? And big old strong buffalo walk past. He don't want him. He would like to have him. But it's too much fight. He let him go. He just let old big, big old big old buffalo walk past. He just let him go. He wants a little one. A weakling. Or one that's coming by hopping. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you. You better watch it. You watch it? You ever watch it? When it behind the whole herd, he just dragging his old foot. That's what he wants. He wants an easy meal. That's exactly what the devil does. He, he walk in the church and he look around. He see them ones and they ain't doing nothing, just they're waiting, watching the watch. Right, right, right. And he'll be on you when you go out that door like a chicken on a June bug, I'm telling you. It will eat you, I'm telling you. That's why God knows. God the one said this. He said, he walks, the devil walks about like a roaring lion. I know how the lions hunt. They look for weaklings. They look for somebody that ain't been to church in six months. No faith. Show up just to keep the name on the roll. No faith. Gotcha. And they're always having trouble. Always having problems. They're always having, always having problems. They're always having problems. Oh, 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 always. I know, I know. I, I, I answered the phone. You see, understand what I'm saying? God has so forewarned you. He's, he's told you that. He walks about like a royal lion, seeking who made him. Now, God says, do what? Resist him steadfast in the faith. You got to have faith in your heart. You can do nothing with the devil if you don't have faith. Amen. You can do nothing with the devil without faith. God said, resist him steadfast in the faith. You got to take the word of God to put on him. When the devil came at Jesus, the Jesus said, it is written. When the devil walked up to you and said, you sick boy, you say, you're a liar. Jesus took my infirmities and bore my sicknesses. But you better know that. You got to know it. You got to know it. And you got to rise up ferociously and say, no. You can't be passive with devils either. I found that out. You can't be passive with them. Yeah, and devil, you better leave me alone. <laughs> go ahead, don't go ahead. He'll have you for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, plus snack. No, no, no. You you have to be. You have to be. You ever you ever read the gospel? When Jesus would make the devil come out, he had some of the Bible said he'd remember that he would use a loud voice with a loud voice. Come out of him. I've, I've, I know what I'm talking about. I, I've had to holler at him. I've, I've had to holler at him. I, I've, I've, I've hollered at the devil. I've hollered at him. I, see, see, here's the thing. about Here's how faith works. you got to know what the Bible says. And you've got to believe what the Bible says. And you've got to know enough what the Bible says to operate in the authority of what the Bible says. Now, over in Luke, we don't, you're going to read it over there. God said, I give you power to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall the enemies hurt you. Amen. Amen. Nothing shall hurt you. Well, well you've got to know that. You said, but, but, but I don't see the devil. Don't you worry, he see you. But when the word of God come out of your mouth with faith in it, 
commanding the devil to take his hands off of your body, he has to listen. Amen. He has to listen. He has to listen. See, your, your responsibility is to develop in faith. You don't develop in faith to get to a point where when the devil show up, you just go and call somebody. No. No. You, the, 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 the phone is for the babies. The phone is for the babies. I said the phone is for the babies. After you've grown up and got a big old thing, your responsibility now is that you said, no, devil. No. No, sir. You're going to take your hand off of me. You're going to take your hand off my kids. You're going to get out of my house. That's your responsibility. Because, see, see, if you call me, that's all I'm going to do. But your, my responsibility is to train you and teach you so that I don't have to come over to your house. Right. Right. I can stay in the bed. Right. You follow me? Amen. Because, but that is what you're supposed to do. Right. Because God has given us that authority. Amen. But if your faith is not developed, then of course you got to call somebody, and you better call somebody if you want to live. But the devil don't care about it. He'll kill you graveyard dead. The devil will kill you before the sun come up. I'm telling you. He'll kill you dead. Wow. But when you're developing your faith, that's what God tells us. He says, you resist him. When he come at you, you resist him. Yeah. Steadfast in the faith. Now watch this part of this after that. Knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. He is running to everybody, doing the same thing to everybody. See that? So don't think for one moment that the devil just pick it on you. You need to develop in your faith to the point where the devil is scared to come out to your house. Praise God. Amen. And you can do that. Amen. He'll rather stop by anybody's house except yours. Amen. But you got to develop your faith to that point. I can't develop your faith to that. I'm telling you, God, remember what God said. He walks about like a what? The lion. If you don't think, go, watch, go on YouTube. The lion does not want the big old strong buffalo. He don't want him. And he would like to have him, but he can't stay. He don't too much fight. And he might get gored. And he does. He, he gets gored. And he may get gored. And he don't want to take that chance. I'm telling you, you've got to develop in your faith that you get like one of those big buffaloes. Where the devil come by your house and say, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you can do that. You can do that. But you have got to do it. You've got to be diligent enough to get on this book and get on your face before God and walk in this love and love people day by day on, in, intentionally and on purpose, yeah. keeping his word before your eyes and build a callous of faith inside of you, dear God, that every devil come in town wants to go around your house. Amen. Yeah. You can do that. That should be your Praise goal. Yeah. And now you've developed, now you're, in, now, you're, now you're in a position where you're ready to go to work now. Because, see, until you get like that, you, you ain't going to do much. You're not going to do much. You ain't going to do much witnessing because the devil going to keep you so busy. He'll keep you too busy. You don't have time. You'll be so, you'll spend all your time trying to keep your own head above drowning water. You ain't trying to go witness nobody trying to get your own hide out of hawk. You understand what I'm talking about? You've got to, listen, the development of your faith is your responsibility. It's not mine. My responsibility is to establish a curriculum whereby you can learn and understand. I'm responsible. If you know that I'm responsible, I'm responsible to stand here and teach you faith. And I, and I've, I, have, I have three sessions. And if you don't know it yet, I'll tell you. Some people on Sunday, I don't think you know it. I don't think you know if it's legal for them to come on Thursday night. Well, it's legal. <laughs> Sunday morning, 9 a.m., Wednesday morning, 10 a.m., and Thursday evening, 7 p.m. I'm here doing what I'm supposed to do. And if happen to be, if I'm out of town, somebody will be here teaching you the word of faith. Your responsibility is to get in here and hear it and develop your faith so that you can grow and fulfill the purpose and calling that God has placed on Amen. your life. Stand to your feet. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you today. Oh, how we bless you. 